Hey there, and thanks for making this video a huge success. Um, I'm not really sure what I was anticipating in terms of a response with this video, but the feedback has been absolutely overwhelming, so thank you for that. I've gotten a lot of questions, even from members uh, of the filmmaking community on how I pulled off some of the transitions um, and editing work in the video. So the goal of today is to kind of peel back the curtain and for the first time go behind the scenes and show you start to finish how I create one of these videos and even get into some of the transitions and specific editing work I did um, that, that made the, the video the success is. Let's get to it. So in planning a travel video, obviously the first thing that needs to happen is to figure out where you're going. What I like to do is once we figure out the country or main location we're traveling to is to pull open a Google Doc and just start typing notes. So once I figure out what location I want to go to, um, you can get on Google Earth and it'll show a 3D rendering. And this is how I pick specific locations of what I would like to include in the video. Uh, so if you're looking here at Bergen, um, you can see one of the churches I shot in the video on a couple scenes actually I found looking through Google Earth. So this is honestly what I just do is get on Google Earth, find key locations, jot those down and then make a point to visit these and shoot them in various ways uh, depending on what I want for that, that section of the video. And it's just rinse and repeat and so once you have your list compiled of where you would like to go and what you would like to shoot and it's all said and done and you shot everything, you gotta edit it. So let's bring up Premiere. Okay, so let's edit one of these clips. Uh, sticking with the same location as Bergen, let me show you a process uh, for one of my transitions here. Um, so my secret, don't tell anybody, uh, it's a technique called masking, right? Um, so what masking does, it's a really cool way for me to transition from one clip to the next seamlessly. So you can see this first clip here, I just have a simple shot through a window looking at some merchandise for sale. Um, and the second shot's a drone shot of the city. So same location, um, but there's really no good way to transition. So what we do um, is you take the clip that you want to transition with and you find uh, motion and blur in the, in the video clip. And I did this on purpose here. You can kind of see how I shake the camera off the subject there. And I did that on purpose so I knew in the editing timeline I was going to mask. So what you do is you put your clip on the timeline. You put the clip you're going to transition to below that on the timeline. Where the transition starts, or the motion starts, you're gonna split your original clip into two, come up to opacity with the new clip selected, free draw, and what you're gonna do, is you're gonna kinda draw a rectangle around here, and the goal of this is to have the rectangle move across the screen, revealing the new clip below. So with that rectangle already drawn, you're gonna click invert, and you'll see this is basically what's gonna be revealed with the new clip. So you're gonna to wanna to put some motion on this. So go to your mask path, select the keyframe, and then frame by frame, you're gonna reveal the new clip below. Boom, you can go ahead and drag this on that dead space. So all said and done, this is what it's gonna look like. Pretty cool. But as you can see, there's a very hard, noticeable line there. So this is my secret. Come in here, go to Feather, take that way up. You can play with expansion as well to kind of toy with where the line's at. And take Feather up even higher. And so when playback at full speed, it's a seamless transition right to the next clip. And honestly, that's like 85% of this video is just masking transitions. And they happen so quickly, you really don't know what's going on. All right, so let me show you one more transition from this location. It's the one at the church, and I've got a lot of questions on this specifically. So um, let me open up Lightroom. Yeah, Lightroom, not Premiere. Um, this clip here was actually a series of photos rather than video, just sped up uh, with some uh, zoom transitions on it. As you can see, all this is, is just photo after photo after photo. So my trick for this is I like to set up my camera on a tripod, turn on your grid lines, and point your grid lines exactly on one location. I think for this photo, I had it like right on this little window up here. Point it at this location on each and every photo. 
as you go through. I think there's about 100, 150 photos here. So take some time, this is about 30, 40 minutes of walking down the street and positioning the camera to point exactly at the same focal point on every single photo. You're gonna edit the way you want. A cool trick for Lightroom is once you have this photo selected, click copy, select the settings you wanna copy, hold shift, go to the last photo of the sequence and hit sync. And then what that does is it applies the exact same edit you had on the first photo to all of your photos. So once your photos are all exported, you're gonna import them into Premiere, select them all, drag them onto your timeline, and then you're gonna to go to speed, duration, bring it all the way down, ripple delete. I like to nest all the photos together to make them easier to work with. Now you have one solid playback here. As you can see, it's very shaky, very wobbly, and that's just gonna happen naturally from shooting manually on a, on a, on a tripod. Uh, so what you do is you go to your effects, warp stabilizer, drop that on there, let it render, almost perfect. One final little touch I like to do is we're gonna keyframe some scale. Make that your start point, it's your end point. We're gonna go in a little bit further. And that's just gonna add one more just touch of just dynamic element, which just makes it more intriguing to watch. And that's honestly it guys. That's the majority of how this video was made. It was just masking and hyperlapses. Very simple. So with that in mind, you can kind of see how some of these sequences play together now. You can see that here, even with the Lofoten section, hyperlapse, Masking, hyperlapse, mask, hyperlapse, hyperlapse. That's all it is. I have no idea how to work this thing or any of this software, honestly. Jeez, okay, hold well. on. That's, uh, that's my travel video, so there'll be more of those to come in the future. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.